everyone. Um, today we're having another Power BI and Power Platform session. So today we're going to be looking at Power Query, but not just how to clean data or transform data, but more about the primitive value of it, the lists, records, tables, functions. Um, today's session is by Michael Olafosi. So um, the Power BI learning community is being brought to you by your BZ and being sponsored by Enterprise DNA. And Enterprise DNA is this data firm that teaches you all about Power BI and how to use it. So there are courses which you could take. And um, your BZ is a Microsoft Excel consulting, financial modeling, business intelligence, data analysis, and enterprise solution firm in Nigeria, and is specialized in helping companies sign professionals be on top of their business data. So they're also the, the developers of the Nigeria Stock Analysis Dashboard, and also the Bambia the Nigeria Markets Data, and also the Nigeria Financial Markets, so which are available in the Microsoft Office Store, which you should check out. Cool. Um, today, the session is by Michael Olafosi. Uh, Marcus Phillips is the founder and the lead solution um, in your BZ. He's also beginning his career in as a radio access engineer for Nokia and then become a business analyst for Elta Africa in 10 different countries. And finally, he became a service delivery lead and performance analyst for 21st century technology. So he regularly blogs on his blog, which I'll share in the description. And he loves everything with Microsoft Excel and Power BI issues. He's also the developer of the Nigeria Market app, which is available in Microsoft Store, the Power BI learning chatbot and the Excel learning chatbot, as well as the stock, the Power BI stock analysis dashboard. And currently he has published three books. So he has a novel, the Microsoft Excel for business, for busy professionals and Power BI for the busy professional as well. And things also currently on writing his photo book as well. So, um, hello, Michael. Thank you. All right, so I'll take it from here. I'll share my screen and you don't need to stay to the end. You can go and rest. Yeah. Let me share my screen. OK, so thank you to everyone. I just want to be sure that I'm showing on my <laughs> so I'm, I have two computers, so I want to check that. Yes, I can see it's going nowhere. Uh, without taking too much time, uh, thank you if I, for the introduction. I didn't even know it to be that detailed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today's topic is Power Query, and um, I, as I have said, we are not going to be cleaning data. In fact, we are not importing any data because that's the usual way people work. sometimes think that's the only way to interact with Power Query. You have to bring in data from somewhere. So today I'm going to show you uh, hopefully things that we, you find useful, but at least different, that's for sure, you know, and I, I'll try to make it exciting too. So I'm going to take us through literal values. It's a bit debatable when you say primitive values. Some people will like list records, everything are primitive values. So let's just say literal values, list, records, table, and and function. So I want to check that the recording is working. Yeah, it is. And uh, as I said, my name is Michael. So let me move to the next slide. It's a, I have slides that will make it easy to talk through some of what I want to say, but I will also need to demonstrate them. So for me, you know, so that's my name showing there as the author of this quote. <laughs> I think the most important update to Excel in the last 12 years, you know, that's like since 20, 12 years would be 2011 or 2012. Uh, I think the most important update since 2010 to Microsoft Excel has been Power Query. You know, it's been, some people might say dynamic array functions. I personally think it's Power Query. Power Query is a very powerful data connectivity and data transformation tool. It's so powerful that Microsoft, you know, didn't just put it in Excel, they put it in a lot of other tools. Many of us think it's just in Excel and Power BI. It's not just in Excel and Power BI, it's in other tools, Dataverse, Power, Power, Power Platform tools, you know, some other Microsoft BI um, tools that most of us on the, uh, business side might not be aware of, you know, or interact with. Its purpose is to enable report and dashboard builders, me and you, you know, connect directly to the data that we need, wherever it is stored, to transform the data as we desire. You, know. you are in charge and have a reputable, that's the thing I love the most about it, that you do it once, you know, and the next time, the next occurrences, it is, 
uh, time you need to run these things again, you know, hopefully you will just click a button like do refresh or just open your Excel or open. And for Power BI, you know, you don't even need to do anything. Just set it in the in the uh, refresh stuff on the Power BI admin, and it will just keep working like that every day. So that's what I mean by a repeatable process of generating updated reports and dashboards as the underlying data change. Okay. So it's a bit mouthful, but then again, as I'm reading it, you can see it. <laughs> so we move on. Uh, so what's more interesting than just what I've read, you know, is the fact that uh, Power Query was officially released by Microsoft in 2013 as an add-in. So by that time, Excel 2010 was already out of the gates. <laughs> so what they did was, okay, if you still use Excel 2010, you now go download this Power Query add-in. And that was how I started using Power Query. I downloaded it as an add-in first, and then I would use it. It was a bit buggy. It was... You know, it was more like the thing you are trying to see what is this thing, what is this about, what's, you know, uh, a double linear there. Then over the course of the years, I did seeing that the things I was doing macros for, I could do them in Power Query and it was like, wow, this thing is really useful, you know. I don't need to do a macro to do, you know, these common things like gather that data from a folder, you know, and you just click a button and it exec goes and pick all the files in the folder. Power Query does that without you needing to write any single line of code. So uh, in Excel 2013, it was an add-in. Then in Excel 2016, they put it there as get and transform data as inbuilt tool in Excel and it sets that direction that they want to make it a native tool in Excel. Something that once you have Excel, it's there and, you know, so it was originally designed to aid Excel users to connect to data directly, especially data that is not housed in any Excel file, databases, um, you know, even PDF, but then it wasn't working with PDF at the beginning. <laughs> so, but like external data. So, and then you transform the data, load into Excel, and then do your usual Excel charts and pivot table and the rest. But at least that extract, transform, and load. ETL. So in case you've been hearing all those big grammars, we now do that in Excel or, or all thanks to Power Query. So if you have any questions, I'll be monitoring the chat box. Uh, let me just make that also visible in my chat, in my second screen. Aha. So where will you find Power Query as of today? You will find it inside Excel. You will find it inside Power BI. And also you will find it in data bars. <laughs> it looks like a um, multiverse and like meta and like all these uh, many crypto terms and metaverse put together but the truth is it's with web stuff anyway so it's not like um, it's you using power query on the web that's the way i like to sometimes describe it to people then also we have azure data lake storage so but dataverse kinds of underlines uh, power platform so a lot of all these um, tools that Microsoft is targeting at citizens, probably citizens developers, that you should be able to use, create meaningful apps without you having to learn how to code, you know, just drag and drop, do a bit of guided um, coding, let me use that word. So the whole power platform, they try to put this common data uh, structure, let me use that word, and data verse. And so when it comes to you manipulating the data in some meaningful way, you might eventually be using the Power Query online that's accessible there. Similar to on Azure Data Lake Storage on the web Azure portal, you are also able to bring in data and then carry out some Power Query stuff for there. So why am I putting this in front of us? Is the fact that when you know this thing, the places you apply the knowledge is no, it's more than in one place. You know, it's like you learning something, and it's applicable in multiple places. So it's, it has a lot of value. If you are the kind of person who says, I'm leaving Excel, I'm moving on to the next things. Well, then your Power Query already puts you in, in the middle of the next things, you know, like data bars, as well, data lake storage, and Power BI. So you might want to take it more seriously just because of this reason that the knowledge applies in a lot of tools. And I think Microsoft is not going to stop at these four tools. Okay. So let's start with um, the things I have lined up for us. There is what we call single entry value. Okay. 
it's as simple as that, like single entry type one to three. You know, all those things we type in Excel, right? You can open a Power Query. I mean, a Power BI. I'm going to, because it's Power BI learning community. So I'll use, power, I'll use the Power Query in Power BI for the illustration, right? I'm going to go to Transform Data. So it opens up Power Query. Um, I will need to zoom my screen some bits. So let me zoom. Okay, good. Let me make this full screen. So this is where I'm going to spend all my demonstration time. So let's start with the literal single values. Right? If I go to new source and I go to blank query. So blank query means I am not importing. You know, most of us go to get data and then you're picking an Excel file, you're pointing to a database, you're pointing to some online data repository. So this is different. <laughs> I'm pointing nowhere. <laughs> I'm clicking right here and saying new source, and I'm choosing a blank query. Okay. So let's start with what I mentioned: the fact that in Power Query, you know, we can actually um, experience data beyond just importing data and having Power Query do some things for. So let's see if I come here and I type one, two, three. The same way we would have typed in Microsoft Excel and empty cell, you know, I get an answer. It's not going to complain. It's not going to say, oh, no, you have to import data from somewhere. You are not allowed to type something into this uh, tool. No. Uh, I can also type text. I can type Michael or Lafus, which is my name. And it's going to like recognize it. It's no, there's no rule that says, you know, I can even type what we know to be Boolean, right? This thing likes to help you. Okay, so uh, what essentially am I trying to mention that you can type into Power Query and you can type exactly what you would have typed in Excel and something will pop up. Okay, so that's um, this one I'm just uh, showing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So that's what I mean by single entry value. You type in whatever you want and it pops up. It shows, you know, I don't, I don't it might be tricky to explain why somebody wants to do that in a real life project, but uh, it's really useful when you know this. There will be times where you want to take that knowledge and use it to achieve something. I feel like saying extraordinary, you know, so I'm going to move to the next one. List. So list is. Another kind of data you can manipulate in Power Query, or let me put it this way, another kind of output type with the tongue in cheek, uh, another type of data type in Power Query. So we have lists, you know, list of items, list of names, list of. So the moment you see the word list, then you are, you know, if you think about it the English way, you're already on the right path. So list is a single dimension array of values, which means that right within Power Query, I can, let's go back to Power Query. Let's go back to Power Query. I can come in here. So let me change this back to one, two, three, four, five, and name these, um, just a um, single entry values, primitive values, value. And I'm going to add another blank. I'm going to add another blank query. And I'm going to call this one a list. So I'm going to call this a list. And I'm going to type so all I need to do is do equal to. I do the. Uh, poly braces. Poly brackets. And I start listing the items in the list, so maybe I want to. Say first name or my separate 
Como hace Pretty Last Name. Country. Okay. And once I do enter, I get a list. <laughs> so I get a list. So this is the list. I might come back and do something more, but for now, let's just take it as it is now. So this is a list. So a list uh, is it's like you have a column, huh? and then you now have all the records under the column. So the only problem is just that it's not going to give you the column header. You can't say, so I'm just like, if I wanted this to look more like what I've explained now, if I have a list of people in this class, so I could say there's a Michael in this class, there's a Tunde in this class, there's, a, there's an Amina in this class, there's an Emeka in this class. There's a there's a, an Akbus in this class. So if I do this, this is like a list of names. If I was to rename this uh, column, give it like a column name, I could say students or participants. So you get the concept. What I'm trying to bring into our working memory is the fact that list is like if you look at your excel if you look at your excel tables and you look at one column of data then that could be the equivalent of a list okay so i'm going to go to another one just to bring up in total what i've said list is a single dimension array of values think of a list of names a list of numbers a list of places a list of emails a list of anything and they don't have to be similar things you know if i could mix numbers and texts so i come here and and instead of my care maybe someone is bearing one two three four five and i can actually write it as a number so you see it's box it's it's not strongly typed or what is the word it's not expecting that whatever i'm typing out homogeneous i could come here and put true You know, um, power query is case sensitive. So I know for certain that it's complaining about my case. <laughs> okay, now it's accepted it, right? So uh, I'm going to now move on. Let's see what else did I say. Uh, they are typically what will be column values in a table, okay? To create a list, you type in the entries, you type in the entries with a comma like we've done within a column brackets a pair of curly brackets so i've demonstrated here for us any questions please feel free to ask let me see if there's been any question piled up for me so far okay so no questions uh, i'm going to carry on so that's a list okay i'm going to go back to my slide there's also a record so here is the one where it might be a bit tricky to explain because you know, in normal English, we only think list, record, they should be the same thing, record of names, record of. But here, uh, we're going to mean something different from the list we just understood. So let's see. A record is a named collection. In programming, we call it a key value pair. Uh, please, apologies, I need to pick an urgent call. when I'm the explanation they will easily sink into our memory so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say I want to create a blank query 
this time around I'm creating a record. So all those grammar I was writing there is simply that when you want to create a record, yes, you start with equal to. It's only a single entry value that we are not using an equal to. Me. I started with an equal to, uh, but then what I will do differently that I'm not going to use fucking braces. I'm going to use square brackets. Okay, so I'm going to say let's create. Let me create my name. Okay, so I start with a key, a key. The interesting thing is when I'm typing the key, I do not put it in double quotes as I would in quotation as I would if I was just typing those values as really values, you know, maybe as single entry or as something inside the list. So I'm not going to put it in quote, but the. So this is the key. And then the value itself, the value that this key will hold. I need to put it in double quotes. If I say that's my first name, then obviously I should be asking what's my last name. And then that one too, I put in double quotes. Uh, let's add one more thing, my country. So I am from Nigeria. Uh, this is good enough. So once I do enter, you notice that it puts this and what is for this and what. So it looks like a transposed column. Column that you ordinarily would think should be. So most of us would think like, okay, this is a column, right? So maybe this would be the first name. Maybe this would be the last name. And then maybe this would be the. So first name. Sorry, I'm writing with my mouse. It's not. <laughs> I think I better stop writing. So last name and country. So let's just call it. So and then I this will be where the Michael will be. And then this will be where the Olafusi will be. You know, and this will be where Nigeria will be. So if you think about it like a table being this way. Then this looks very much like when you take the table and you turn it sideways. Turn it sideways so that it looks like this. Huh? So I'm now having first name. I'm having like column one, column two, column three. Whereas as a table to have in column one, column two, column three, right? And what other thing am I having? The fact that, okay, I'm only having only one record, one entry, so only one name. So I tell people that if we look at the table we are familiar with, then a record is like a one, one row table that is now transposed. Okay, so that's how I tell people to sometimes Think about it. I'm going to go move go on now to. Uh, so that's what I've written here anyway. I, a record is a named collection of key value pairs. The format makes it look like a transpose table with columns that hold just one value. So now you understand it. You can create a record by typing key value pair entries within a square bracket. So that's what I did. See the screenshot. So I think we did something like this actually. Right, you can always convert most of these things into a table. So whenever we do record list, exactly like typically we show you do you want to convert into a table? Because somehow we are used to tables. So and most of all the functions in um, Power Query also uh there are a lot more functions that work on table than they work on record or list or value. So it's understandable that maybe it's asking us if we want to take it into a table. I'm going to go to another one. So we have table itself, right? So a table doesn't need so much introduction. We all know what a table looks like. But then when you want to type a table inside of it, inside of Power Query, not so many people have done that. You know, more, what most of us do is we we import data and it comes as a table. What if I want to create my own table right within Power Query? So let's go create one. 
and then after I can talk about the theory I have there. So I'm going to pick again blank query. Let me just check if there are any questions piled up for me yet. Okay, so no questions yet. Oh, I see there's one question. What is the use of record within Power BI? <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, I'm going to come to the questions and maybe to confess I had, I don't think I have a very good answer. I have to be thinking about it even as I continue. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me carry on. So let's do a table. Okay, but now we are going to type it. We're going to type a table from scratch. We are not going to import a table like we usually do for in most of the things we do, we are importing the data. So I'm going to come in here and as usual, it is equal to, but the good thing is there's a particular way of easily creating a table. So you do equal to then the pound sign, I call it hash, table. Again, power query is um, case sensitive. So you have to be extra careful that anything you type, you're following the, like the table must be all in lower case. So, I do I do a parenthesis. Then inside my parenthesis, I start to write a list. So you begin to see that I'm writing a list now. So let's say I want to create a table that we have three rows and it will be first name, last name, and country, right? So first name. So I need to write the columns first. First name, comma, last name. Comma country. OK, and then now that I'm done with the. With the column names, right? What next do I do? The values I want to put in there. So for the values, it's interesting for the values. Uh, they're going to be in double. What do I mean by double like? There will be one for all of the values. Let me put it this way. All the values will be here. But then for every row, let me rephrase, for every column, let me put it that way. So all the values will be here, but then every column, I'm going to also put the data that I want, meaning that for first name column, I do another one, and I'm going to say, okay, for first name column, I'm going to have John. I'm going to have comma, Mary, comma, uh, let's put the lady's name, Amaka. So this will be all the records for first name. Okay, so this will be what we reflect for first name. Then I have to say, all right, so let's go to last name. So for last names, I also have to do another list and say, hmm. One more. Like the limo, uh, which are the other popular son names. Soko. Uh, I don't want to use a politician's name. Uh, well, anyway, Garuba. I mean, doesn't have to be. In. There's nothing to the name, it's just the demonstration. So that will be for the last name. Then as per country, another list, right? So in here, I'm going to say, okay, maybe this someone is Nigeria, another person is Senegal, and then another person is uh, Cameroon. So what has happened is this space was so, and so it took it to another line. Okay. All right. And that's it. You see it's come out, right? So in um in, in Power Query, this is how we create a this is how we create a table if you want to type it. There's another way, but this is to me, I think this is maybe the most powerful way. The other one. Here I can begin to change type. 
let me show you what I mean. If you come in here and you change, you know, you know this, how you change a chart, a type and say text. Okay. So you see it's right, name, first name, type as text, right? Okay, good. I could have just typed this there straight up. What do I mean? I'm going to undo what I've done. I'm going to cancel this step. So we are back to the original data. I could have come in here and say type as text. Type as text. I said, let me see if I did that correctly. Uh, I think I didn't do that correctly. Let me just check my raw data. have another place where I have the raw data. I don't want to do too many try and error. So, uh, I'm having trouble locating where I have that information. I'll just move on. Just ignore if it's okay. So it's taking me much longer than I. On. So I'm going to just delete this for now. Let's go with what has worked correctly. And I could always change it from here. I was trying to show us how I could have done the same thing straight in this without having to do it as a separate step. But let's go on. So this is a table, right? The next question is, how does this relate to record and list? It's very interesting. Uh, so I have it in my slide. So if you think of a, okay, let me just read this. A table is a collection of rows and columns of data. It is the most common structure of data we will encounter in Power Query. As most data sources automatically reflect their data in a table structure within Power Query. It's a bit mouthful, but what it says is when you import data into Power Query, most of the time you see a table come out, you know, instantly. Okay, so it's the most common data structure to you will encounter. So this is, a, this is what we have done, very much like this, the values are a bit different. And then if I go on, uh, you can actually say a table is a record of lists. What do I mean is a record of lists? So when you have lists that has records inside, uh, no, is there another way? We have a record that is now like many, many lists. That's the word. Like this first name. Uh, this first name, it now has, just think of this first name as a key pair. It now has all these many, many lists as the things under them. We have last name as a record, but has many, many entries. Unlike the one we did where every single record had just one entry, right? So if you think of table as, like a list with many entries. Just pull up something. Let's see, I have one other example. I'm seeing if I can pull it up. Yeah. If you have any question, in, you can pile them up for me. I know someone has asked, where do we use a record? It's a bit tricky. 
So what do I mean by it's a bit tricky? Uh, the fact that I can tell us what the record is, but I've not had a situation where I needed to, and that's because most of my work, I'm bringing in data somewhere. I'm not necessarily having to type the data in a, um, I'm not necessarily having to type the data. So I've seen what I'm looking for for that other one, but I can come back to it. So that has made it that I'm never needing to type records by themselves or type lists by themselves. Uh, but then again, I'm sure if we search on the web, there will be someone who has um, used, there will be someone who has used, okay. So I've seen that other one, how you change the type. Well, we'll talk about it later. How do you reference a created table in a function? Awesome, we're going to do a function. So, uh, not just function, you can reference a table in any other thing, okay? So let me finish off with this. I'm going to try something that I've tried long ago. And if it works, great. If it doesn't work, we'll skip. I want to show you exactly that a table is a record of lists. I have two ways. There's a way that I prepared for this presentation but I'm getting ideas of, let me show you another way. If the other way I want to prove to you doesn't work, then no problem, We I will just ditch, ditch it. So I said it's a record of list, right? How do we start a record? This way, right? So if I say first name equal to a list, John, comma, Jane, okay? And then I do comma, and I say last name, equal, uh, um, Bell, comma, Larry. Okay, so let's see what this gives us. I close everything I need to close. Mm. I need to transform. Let me just do a quick check on. I have a repository. I told us if I'm not able to make it work without doing too many trial and error, it's been a long time I wrote a table that way. <laughs> so that's why I'm not so sure, I'm not surprised that it's not coming out correctly. I used to, that was my preferred way until I started using table. If someone knows the way I'm just using these poly braces and, and square brackets, if you know that approach to feel free to write it. Otherwise, I will just use another the one half half plan to show us how to prove to you that a table is a record of lists. Okay, I've seen it also. Uh, then what did I do differently? Okay, no. I'm not saying. Okay, I'm going to our bot and go back to the way I have planned. Okay. Checking one more, please. All right, officially I can't find it. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the second approach that I already practiced to explain to us. I'm going to delete this. All right, so uh, if I go back to this, to the, to this, if you do a table and you grab you know how you grab it technically in a um, power query when you want to grab the first record in a in a record the first record in a record so you do this uh colibrisis right and you put one so it's going to get you oh, sorry when you want to grab a list sorry when you want to grab a list if it's a record you put the key 
So if I say a table is a record of lists, it means that if I if I grab the first the column is a list. If I grab, if say if I say grab me, you get for me the first. It's going to get for me, you know, the first record in that in that list. Sounding a bit funny, but let's go here. I'm going to duplicate this. I'll copy this table. Let's duplicate. Duplicate. Duplicate this table. When we say, I'm going to transform this to a list. And all I do is uh, I say, get for me the first record. So this thing starts from one. It doesn't do zero one. So get for me the first. If you think of this as a list, then get for me the first. And if I do, if I commit it, I commit this. Can you see that it's getting for me more, more Osoko and Garuba? Oh, sorry, it's, it's zero indexed. So let's get the first one. The first one will be zero. So it will be John, Mary, and Amaka. So it's getting for me that, okay, uh, Someone saying they can't see my screen. What about now? Do you see the screen? Is it visible now? Okay, so I'm again resharing. I was trying to zoom. Maybe that's why you couldn't see. Okay, all right. Someone is also saying you can. Uh, Cephas, you might need to maybe go out and come back in. Maybe you'll be able to see and hear all over again. All right, so what I'm trying to explain to us is that this is a table. But when I tell Power Query to grab for me the first record, I'm going to get essentially this first name. I'm getting this, which is a column. Which, what did I tell us is like a column in Excel, in Power Query? I told us that a list is like a column. If you remember what I mentioned there, that a list is like a column. I think then we did just names. We put just names back again. So this is the list. It's like a column. And when I do this, You will notice that back here, this record. So this is like within my easier to explain it this way. It's a bit tricky. If I come here and I say get me the first, look at my screen, right? I put get me the first. Do you notice it gets me Michael? Okay, so it's as if I've come here and I say, in this list, get me the first item. And what is it getting me? It's getting me a record. So it's like I have a list that there is many records inside. So that's why, even though this is a list, it's a record that is coming out. Unlike when I was, I did it here, because this is the, these are literal values. So that's why when I did it. It's not giving me a, it's not giving me a record. It's giving me just the literal value. Let's see if we can do something interesting. Let's say I put in here a list and say first name equals Michael. Okay, good. Now if I do this, can you see what comes out? Uh, is this not looking very much? Like, so let's just do one more thing and say comma, last name. Last name equal Olafus. Please need to eat this thing to commit it. Great. So, uh, Let's commit all of this. Okay, 
So if you look, think of it, it looks like a list of records is a table. Meaning if I take this and I put it here again, I put it here also. And just to make things look a bit different, let's just leave it like this. See? List of records. If I try to convert this into a table, it's going to ask me, but I don't want to go too far. I want to give us an idea of the fact that the moment I put it, get me maybe the second one, what I'm going to get is looking very similar to what I'm getting when I do the same thing on a table. So I hope you are beginning to get what I'm trying to point out, that the fact that the table in quotes, and this one can be very useful. This knowledge can be very useful. You have a table, you can extract out one column. Because you understand that the table is actually a list of records. So all I need to do is say, get me a record number. So let's look at this now. This is the table. So if I say, get me this. Now I see why things are looking a bit funny. John, first name John, last name Mary. Country should be country. Country should have been Nigeria. Sorry. Then this one country should have been Senegal. And this one will now have been Lanry. Sibili. Uh -huh. So it will look a bit more realistic. So you have all the first name, all the uh -huh. And so if I do this again, you see, it gives me the first record. If I put this, it gets me the second record. If I do this, it gets me the third record. So with this knowledge, you can get out like rules as a record from a table that I can explain. But then let's go to what about I want to get out the column. So if I again duplicate this, but I'm going to use this to demonstrate the record portion of it. What that means is this table. Uh, I'm going to tell a uh, Power Query that I want to get a particular column, but I want to get it as a record anyway. So a column is a record, if you think about it. So I'm going to say I want to get the, let's say the first. Let me use the corrected one. So I'm mm -hmm. going to go back here and grab the one I've, I've corrected the way it's looking. Go here, grab this. Okay. Paste. Ah, so this is the one that is looking correct. So I'm going to also just paste here. So with this, if I tell our query that what I want to grab is the let's grab country. All I need to do is the square bracket. And remember, you don't put it in. You don't put it in quotes. I get it. I get the list. The other one provided a record. This one provided a list. So it's a big character in tweeting. I am pulling out a record. That's what I said. Get me the record country. But inside that record, there are a list. That's why I'm getting a list. So don't think like, why am I calling this a record? It is actually a record. This is a record. But inside our record, it's a list of countries. OK, and this one we did is actually a list. We told it to give us. Then it gave us a record 
one row. You remember when you say you look into a database, pull out record on row number 200. So think about this as this is the record on that particular row. But now this one works zero index. So this will be row three. OK, what do I mean? This will be like row three, one to three. If I wanted what was on row one, it will be zero. And then I do it okay, to give me the record on row one. Whereas when I'm in here and I want to get a record, so it's as if I want to get all the first name records. So I'm getting like a column, all the records in a column. So that's how this one sounds more like. So it's like, okay, these are a first name. The first name is a column of all these names. Last name is a column of all these names. If I want to get the columns of all the first name or last name, all I need to provide is this as a as the key within my my record. Okay, so I'm going to do this and get what guess what happens. I get all the last names. Essentially, when you have a record, all you need to do is just say, get me what is in last name. So this is a record, right? So if I say, get me what is in last name, and I commit this, you see it gets me only, but because it's only one entry that is here, that's why I'm getting Olafusi. Assuming what I have here is a, is a list. Lafusi, comma. Uh, let's use Mr. Excel Sonny. Okay. Check it out. I get a list. So, are you beginning to see how this is very much like what you are seeing here, too? Okay. So, the tricky part is how then is this knowledge useful? I believe it is useful. I've seen people do presentations where um uh, they use a list yeah there was a presentation that i think the presentation that um uh, chandra did for so we invited chandra what was his other popular name um he has his more popular name <laughs> so i invite we invited him and the presentation he did for us was on lists to be sincere. He, he presented on how you could use lists to achieve some things. Chandu, so Chandu. So Chandu presented on lists. If I can get the video, maybe I'll share it, right? So I can't remember the content, but I know he used lists to achieve a lot of very, try to tie it back to practical things. Can we get a recorded version of this session? Yes. Uh, let me see any other question. So Chris is asking, how do you reference it? Oh, that reminds me. I still have one more thing. I have a function. OK, so uh, I hope now we are a bit able to now wrap our heads around all those tables, even though we are importing them. If you had the patience to type, you could have typed them out and then you could get out list and all of that from them. So there's also a function. So what functions do is that they return something, but they are also a value. It's a bit tricky to refer, put your wrap your wrap your head around, but the truth is also I can. So let's start with I go here. I create an empty. I'm going to create an empty. Query blank query. So let's write a function. What's a function in a power query? So a function in Power Query is as this syntax. You know, you write the function name. So you say func is equal to. So maybe that's my function name now. Is equal to the parameters that I need it to have a comma b. Then what should happen to those parameters? How should those parameters be manipulated? So you do equal to and a greater than almost like an arrow sign, you know, and so I could say this would be a plus b, a plus b. 
So the thing is, where, where we are writing now, we need to return something, right? So we need to return a value. So the issue is if I write this, it won't work. It's going to be a bit confused. So what we normally do is, we will now say, because this is like I've defined the function, but I need to call it and say, okay, you know what, this function I've, I've written, this function I've written, I want it to return something. So I could say, um, I'm just saying return for illustration, it doesn't have to be returned. Whatever you want, you could write funk 4, 6. So whenever you have multiple lines of um, of, of command, of, of expressions, in Power Query, you must um, you must use let. Well, it's not a compulsory. There's another way, but the easiest way, the recommended way, is to use let so that uh, Power Query knows that you want to write a lot of things. So I'm going to say let the keyword let all in lowercase, and then I write all the things I want. I will now tell it that I want to. So you say let in all these many many things, just return for me the last thing I want to display. So this return is not compulsory. Let me show you what I mean. If I do enter, I get 100. 4 plus 6 is obviously 100. But I could have just write red. It doesn't matter what I write. As long as I'm referencing what I want the expression to finally display, it works. You know, I could say maybe this should have been times instead of um, instead of equal to. And then I do this and I get times six. So a function is another kind of a primitive data typing power query, something you could type right within Power Query and get an answer. You don't have to import and then you can take it further. So there's also you create functions that are feeding on other things. Uh, but at this juncture, I'm looking at our time. At least I just wanted us to understand that there's a list. There's no, first of all, there's single entry where you could type in anything that you normally would have in Excel and it will work, you know. And I also wanted you to know that there's a list and that a list has a, let me correct this one. So I, there's a list. Let me just write what I had before. A list is always in parentheses, the curly braces, I mean. Poly braces, I could have John, I could have Jane, I could have Jerry, and that's a that's a list, okay, in poly braces, comma separated, and I could have record for record record. It is what I want, and so let me just correct this one. Last name equals to so it's a key pair the key equal to the value the value pair the key equal to the value and that is all you need in a square bracket to get out a record then a table as a syntax is this table there's another way if I'm patient enough to open, just that I can open client work right here, that's the other way I use. It's shorter than this. Let me check if anybody has put anything in the comment box. It's way shorter than this one. I'm just using those um, square. I start. I think I start with a with a square bracket. Then I use a curly brace to write all the things I want. Uh, I think yes, but then I don't know why I'm struggling to get it out. Okay, so. Uh, if you remember this, unfortunately, this is what I remember nowadays. So you just do pound table parentheses, then you write a list of the headers, then you write a list of the entries. So in each entry, if what you are trying to do has multiple rows, you know, like there's not just one. There's one record. As many records, you put them also in a 
in a list, command separated for each. So a record is a row. So you see that John Mary Nigeria, John Mary Nigeria, Momo Kusoko Senegal, Momo Kusoko Senegal. So they are all rows. As many rows as you want, you keep writing. I could add one more row and say, let me look at people in our, say Idris, Usman, and his country. Let me give him, um, let me give him Canada. Okay, so once I do that, you see that I make any mistake somewhere. Oh, I forgot to put him in a in his own dedicated curly braces. Okay, once I do that, you see he adds him as another mm -hmm. row in my data. So it's like I keep adding each row inside of it. Okay, I hope that's also clear. And yes, there will be a recorded recording of this. I also mentioned that if you have a table, uh, you can extract out a list. When you do a list out of a table, you will get a record. <laughs> so it's funny because if you say you want the first record, you put zero, you get it. If you say you want the third record, you put two, you get the third record. So you count from zero. And then if you want a column, so if you want a column, then you're going to indicate as if it's a it's a record. You just put the oh, I want the last name records, and then you get a list. A bit like I said, it can be brain twisting, but just know that if I put if if I put the column in a square bracket, I'm going to get all the records. You know, all the if I have like ten people, I'll get all those ten people's last names in this case. So I hope it's um, explanatory. We've come to the end of the session. Any other questions? No, sorry, I'm not able to explain with some real life demonstration of where it's useful because to be sincere, I, I don't know. I have to go research and check online and see where someone has used it, that it's applicable to most real world situations we face. And then I will be able to now do it. But in that case, I might not be able to do for everything. Maybe I'll just pick list and record. I think list is the one people say it's a lot, lot useful because yeah, you could do some manipulations on lists that are pretty interesting, you know, I think compared to record. So it's list I see people try to use in real world stores. You know, I could do a list of of dates. Yeah, I think I see that one where you want to create a date table in Power Query. So you just do a list of dates and then from there, let me try and just see if I I remember all the exact steps to that one. So I think I go here and I say, OK. If I want to do uh, some series of numbers, one dot dot, maybe 10. And then if I do this. Uh, so that's interesting. This one changed to dates. OK. Again, uh, let me not use us for try and error right now. Oh, yes, list. I forgot to put it inside the list. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one dot dot ten. Auto, sorry. So you get a list. Uh, so this is one very common one. Uh, who helped me out with that? So uh, there are, I've seen people use this to now manipulate things on a more. So now I'll have something as another as another column that will be happening for every single row of value. OK, I can't remember exactly what. So that's why I'm careful not to start something and stop in the middle. But I know that this is very commonly used. So this is one very used common use of list uh, record. Very tricky. I have not seen someone use record for something that I, I could link to real world uh, scenario. So, any other questions? Right. So, if no questions, I'm going to end the session right now. Convert to table and then add columns. Most common use is creating the table. Yeah. Yeah. So, this one, the one about, so let's say I put a start here. I could say, my, I want to.
create years from 2018 to 2022. So this get the years part and then I begin to create all the months in each of them. And then I auto expand. So it becomes list of lists and I make it a table. Different ways anyway. So uh, I'm going to end here. Thank you very much to everyone. Sorry that um, I didn't prepare ahead for some real world data use. I felt like with the time I have, let me just stick to something more straightforward. Let me just stick to showing us the different times one after the other so thank you very much and have a very wonderful week ahead bye bye we're going to end the session here bye